the streets on dappled field, shepherd's purse in tender bloom, lightly ruffles in the breeze, so playfully at ease. Say there, say there, say there, is there a more refreshing song? Summer noon, oleander is a blue, so boasting proudly crimson hues, unrivaled in view. Say that, say that, say that, say that, is there a more compelling sign? Stir of autumn winds, 
Hello. Good evening, everyone. Aloha kako, aloha. Welcome to Puna Honganji Buddhist Temple Wednesday online service. Thank you so much for taking your time. We'll begin our service with reading of Golden Chain Love. I am a link in Amida Buddha's Golden Chain Love that the searches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I'll try to be kind and gentle to every living, living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I'll try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida's golden chain love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. No more Amida, no more Amida, no more. Now you see the words. Thank you for your patience. Now we will have a moment of reflection. So try to think about today's your day. If you're working, about your working. If you stay at the home, about your day, what you said, what you thought, what you did. Let us think about our life today. I'll invite you to join the moment of reflection one bell and to conclude a ring one more time. Now we do have a chanting of Vandalanti Sarana. Oh, 
Sangha for So now we do have a chanting of sutra. Today's sutra is 12 homages.
If you have an uh, uh, insensible uh, preparation, please offer incense at this moment. So now we do have a gatha singing. Today's gatha is a living gratefully. Again, today I do have a music. Did you hear that sound? Did you did you hear a sound? Sorry, wait a minute. Um, did you hear the ukulele sound? Oh. Sorry, let me try again. So again, uh, thank you for your patience. Gata living gratefully. Thank you so much for your patience. 
I hope you can uh, sing along with the ukulele. Uh, thank you so much. So now I do have my own message. Uh, today's title is uh, The Ocean of the Buddha's Virtue. The Ocean of the Buddha's Virtue. So I think uh, so now I want to share one word with you, one word with you. And if when you see the word, can you think about what kind of image you may have? What kind of idea, concept come to your mind? So this is a word I want to ask you to think about. <clears throat> Ocean. So what kind of uh, idea or concept coming to your mind when you're reading the word of ocean? <clears throat> so could be some people may say yeah, we are living in Hawaii, so we have a beautiful ocean, so clean and then nice shore and then beach. And then so many people want to come to Hawaii to enjoy uh, Waikiki Beach, yeah? And then also over here, Big Island too. Also, I think especially for us in Hilo, Big Island, yeah, we also know ocean can be so dangerous, like a tsunami, the tidal wave. Yeah. Also, ocean can be, we may feel so beautiful, wonderful. Also, can be, we may feel uh, so uh, scary. That's why some people like go to, uh, how do I say, fishing or also surfing, actually, or marine sports. So ocean have uh, so many uh, perspectives. And then we can, ocean can be part of our life. Yeah. So again, ocean can be so many perspectives. But there, there is only one ocean. Only one ocean. Depending on our situation or convenience or lifestyle, we may call it ocean is so beautiful, wonderful, or so scary, dangerous, or for playing or sports. But the ocean is only one. One ocean. And then ocean is a nature, natural thing. For us, we see ocean see differently. So again, so our founder, Master Shinra, Master Shinra also often using the ocean in his writing also message, using ocean for metaphor to explain something. And then this is one of the sentence our founder using. So our founder, he said, the ocean of birth and death of painful existence has no bound. Only by the ship of Amida's universal vow can we who have been who have long been drowning unfailingly be brought across it. So this is uh, our words by our founder, Master Shinnan. The ocean of birth and death, of painful existence, has no bound. Yeah, ocean is so big and then huge. Like in that day, our human being existence full painful. What is a concern? No bound. No. Like an ocean forever, never ending. And then therefore, only by the ship of Amida's universal vow, me, can we, can I, me, who has been drowning in the ocean of worries, concerns, unfailingly be brought across it, which means I can get out of the ocean and then go to the uh, other shore. So let me uh, share also in this way. So again, today's title or theme is uh, Ocean. Ocean. So Ocean, our founder point, points out, saying Ocean is our human life, like our human life. Yeah. So in the beginning, we said that Ocean can be, we go fishing, surfing, or full of life or uh, so beautiful beach shore. Also, we know ocean is a mother of life. Also, ocean can be so dangerous, like a tsunami, tidal wave. But ocean also so many parts of life. However, our Buddhism or founder telling us, ocean is like we call it in this way. Samsara, 
world of suffering, world of suffering, like an ocean. Being ocean is so big and huge, never ending. Our human life, yeah, like an ocean, where it's concerned, we may have it, yeah, like a wave. Something come to our life, one wave, and we try to went through. Again, another wave come to our life, yeah. Like maybe over here, big island, we had a lava, like a first wave. And then now we do have a, had a hurricane or flood. Now again, we have a coronavirus, like a wave of ocean. Our human being life going through so many things, yeah. And then how many of you had a more totally beautiful life, no waves? Totally, always, perfect, perfectly peace, no waves. Who had such a life so far? Me, myself, I had uh, so many waves, up and down, up and down, never ending. Yeah. So this is like uh, our founder tried to describe. We human beings going through so many things. Sometimes because of the caused by outside. But our founder pointing out, person or happening or situation is only cause and condition. Fundamental reason of our worries concern is deep inside of me. We call it a desire, attachment, or ego. Due to we have a human life as a samsara, world of suffering, like a waves, waves, constantly waves. At the same time, our founder point out ocean also another perspective. He said, Buddha's vow, yeah, Buddha's vow, which is yeah, Nirvana, world of enlightenment, or we may call it the pure land. So also like a ocean, Buddha's virtue, pureness, beauty, perfection, harmony, happiness, Never ending like ocean, so vast, so huge. Therefore, Buddha's vow and then virtue like an ocean, so profound, so deep, so excellent. So our founder said, my life is like an ocean, waves and then waves, waves and then waves. Also, ocean like Buddha's vow, so profound, deep. So. Our founder promised, we are living, I'm living a life of human life, samsara. So again, Buddhism, yeah, our purpose in Buddhism is to become a Buddha, to free from suffering, and then reach to the pure land, enlightenment. That is our purpose. So therefore, samsara to nirvana. How we can swim across the ocean, that is a point. And then our founder said, we can get out of the ocean of our human life, world of suffering, by the Amida's ship, ship of vow. With only with this vow, we can across the ocean of suffering and then reach to the enlightenment. And then so I think uh, since I came to Hawaii, uh, seven years ago, I enjoy Hawaiian culture, also uh, Hawaiian breathing, also sunshine, beach, I enjoy. But uh, even when I go to ocean or beach, I never went into the water. I always uh, stop on the shore. Maybe I may go to like attach the water or on the shallow area, but never ever went to the deep more far as into deep into the ocean, I never. The reason was the one thing is, uh, I think of when I was a teenager, 12 or 13 years old. I think, uh, do you know the movie, uh, Jaws? Like a movie of a shark, like a shark. But now after I watched the movie, I'm so scared. After I watched the movie, Jaws, every time when I went to ocean, you know, in the, Go went to in the water, the you know music, the sound came to my mind, so I'm so afraid, and I didn't want to go to too much so a far side on the ocean. But another reason is also yeah, I think also since when I was a 
in that age, my family went to the uh, beach, to the ocean. So my parents, my older brother, and then sister, we went to, together to the ocean. And I think I went to that time here, yeah, I still can go into the ocean. And then, but I try to make sure my feet can touch the seabed or ocean floor. Yeah. I'll make sure my feet touching the ocean floor so I don't have to swim or I don't have to like a float. I'm not good at swimming. So I'll make sure my feet touching on the ocean floor. Yeah. But uh, suddenly, when I am walking, yeah, suddenly my feet couldn't touch the ocean floor. I guess the ocean floor see suddenly like a more deeper. So I'm so panicked, like a drinking a water and I'm so panicked. Yeah. Oh, I'm like a drowning. I'm so panicked. And then when I was in a such a situation, something uh, coming too closer to me, something black, something black, and then suddenly like, it shows up. It's my older brother. I guess that he noticed I was kind of in the situation, panicked. So he said that he tried to rescue me. And then, oh, my brother, I like so panicked. So I like grab him and on his shoulder, he tried to carry me to the shore. But the poor my brother, yeah, I'm so panicked. So moving around like a more, my arm like around his neck. So he also almost drowning. But uh, he did his best to carry me to the shore. And then finally, he brought me back to the shore. And I'm crying so panicked. And then on that day, even after my brother told me, hey, let's go again. I said, no, I'm fine, thank you. I think I'm so scared, so tired, so panicked. Yeah. And then after this situation, uh, Paul finished, I think uh, maybe a week later, again, we went to the ocean beach. Then my brother told me again, tells me, Hey, Satoshi, let's go to the beach. I said, Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I want to stay here on the shore. And then later, my father, he said, Hey, Satoshi, let's go together. I said, No, Dad, I don't want to go. I'm so scared. And then he said, No worry. This time I carry I carry you on my shoulder on my back, so you grab your arm onto my neck. I carry you. We can go together into the deep far side of the ocean. And I'm thinking, well, my father is a big guy, over six point two feet, big back and so mm, big person. So I feel, oh, maybe I can go there. Also, like uh, I feel so nervous, but. Uh, you know, my father, he's okay. And then he went to the ocean, carrying me on his back. And then we went to the deep far, yeah? more far side, far side, so deep, uh, not shallow, deep. Yeah? So that is a point. I cannot stand with my feet so deep. But yeah, then we, my father dived into the uh, ocean floor. I kind of was scared. But when I opened my eyes, I can see so beautiful fish, so beautiful white sands. I can, I can, I enjoy watching beautiful, uh, clean water fish. I really enjoy, yeah. So then, uh, so I think the situation yeah, before I was drowning, I was really scared. And on my brother's shoulder, still I was so panicked. But uh, now on father's back and then shoulder, I feel really safe, so secure. Oh, I can go ocean with you. Deep inside, I don't scare. I can go there because my father has a stable, big back and then body, so I can trust him. So in a similar way, I try to explain. Yeah, I am living a life of ocean human life, world of suffering. Yeah. Like uh, waves, our minds and heart changing, changing. So many things come to our life. And the fundamental cause we can find in our deep insight. We call it ego desire attachment. Yeah. And then to become a Buddha, 
attain enlightenment is purposeful Buddhism. Yeah, that is a purpose to be freed from suffering, no more desire. To do that, we have to cross this ocean. Yeah? How we can do that? Our founder for 20 years, he tried using his power, his effort. He tried, tried to control his mind, heart, so peaceful. It's like a surface of the water, no wave, totally like a silence, totally not, no waves. That is a realm or enlightenment. However, our founder found out no matter he tried to control his mind, always peaceful, pure, beautiful, compassionate, kind. If something happened which he didn't like, the wave arose. If somebody said something which makes you upset, another wave comes. When something happened to his life which he didn't want it, again waves. So he found no matter he tried, it is impossible to control this my mind and heart, which is always changing and changing. So therefore, at that moment, no way to become a Buddha, no way to cross this ocean of suffering. And that is the moment our founder realized. Therefore, we have ship of Amida Buddha, Buddha's vow promise. Because of me, because of me, Buddha promised to save me from suffering of ocean and then bring me to the ocean of the pure land, but realm of enlightenment. Yeah. So that is, uh, we call it the uh, Buddha Primal Vow. Amida's ship, knowing that I'm so going through so many difficulties, therefore rely on Amida Buddha's vow, promise, which assures me to become a Buddha and then cross to the ocean of enlightenment from this world of suffering. That the vow is, we call it the Namo Amida Buddha, the ship of Amida Buddha. Promise my life to become a Buddha, attain enlightenment. So again, so as a part of my conclusion, also like uh, also ocean yeah, again like has a meaning of it so big, so huge, and then pure and then clean. We often use uh, also story of the river, yeah, river flowing to the ocean. River like uh, our life, we are living uh, our life. River flowing to this uh, curve and then this uh, sometimes so fast, sometimes so slow. Sometimes people throw trash, become uh, dirty, well, dirt come to our life. Yeah? But the river flows into flows and flows, like our life going through so many things. Yeah? Aging, sickness, separation, happiness, peace, so many things we are going through. And then eventually, where does the river going? Where does this river flow into? Yeah, river flow into the ocean. Then once this river flow into the ocean, can we tell this when we scoop the water from ocean? This is a water from that river. This is a, from that river. We cannot tell. Once a river flow into the ocean. It becomes a one taste, one taste of enlightenment. No distinction, no discrimination. Ocean accepts every river, everything as it is, no matter what. Once it enters, it becomes one taste of enlightenment. In the same way, our life, my life contains yeah, so many uh, something good, something bad, anger, greed, worries, concerns. I do my best. But once my life, river, flow into the ocean of life, pure land, my life becomes part of Buddha's enlightenment. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, as the ocean also, we can imagine, yeah, ocean wash away things, yeah. If you go to imagine the ocean on the shore, 
water wave come to the ocean back and forth there. Yeah? Come to this way, wave comes back, wave come again, comes back here. Yeah? And if we have uh, something in the ocean, ocean bring us uh, something to the shore, and they leave it on the sand or shore. Yeah? And they will on the water come back. So which means the uh, ocean doesn't contain things. Ocean has a pureness. Yeah. Ocean has a perfection. If something comes to ocean, the wave bring it to the shore eventually. In the same way, my life may contain difficulty, worries, concerns, sufferings. But once my life flow into the ocean of compassion, enlightenment, everything my ego desire washed away into the shore, never contain such a thing. The ocean is a symbol, realm of enlightenment. Therefore, my life also become a part of this Buddha's enlightenment. So as a final conclusion, do you know what this is? Yeah, this is a stone, stone, yeah? kind of like a heavy stone. Yeah? So if I throw this stone into the ocean, what happened? Let's imagine I'm standing in front of the ocean like this. If I throw this stone into the ocean, what happened? What happened to this stone? Yeah, stone will sink into the ocean floor, yeah, seabed. Yeah. The ocean has a, just a stone has a nature or just a sink into the ocean, ocean floor. But what if, if I place this stone on the small tiny ship on the surface of the ocean. If I place this stone on the ship, what will happen to this stone? Sink? No, yeah? Because of the ship, this stone never sink again. Ship can sustain, make it float on the ocean. So same way, my, my life, like a stone, never changing. I try to do my best, yeah. However, under coronavirus situation, yeah, well, we learned until May, May 31st, this situation may be continued. We may feel so worries, concerns, yeah, my mind, heart, changing, changing. But we can feel, therefore, Amida Buddha promise to embrace this my life, my heart, lonely, Worries, anxiety, depression, so many going through. Therefore, Amida Buddha promised, I accept you, embrace you as you are. And then we can feel that my nature doesn't change. However, we can feel assured, whatever I'm going through, this Amida Buddha's vow promised to save me, to embrace me, to accept me. I'll never continue to suffer. I never think again because of this Buddha's vow of ship. So this is our so calling of Namo Amitabutsu, Namo Amitabutsu. When I hearing Namo Amitabutsu, it's a moment to realize my life is in Buddha's embrace. And why Amida Buddha embraces me? Because of my nature, my mind, heart, changing, changing, depending on situation, convenience. I'm the one who creating a suffering too. Therefore, Buddha promised to accept me. When we realize Buddha's vow ship in our life, we can have a reflection. That's right, again, my heart and the mind changing, changing. That is the moment we can receive Buddha's ocean-like compassion, wisdom, embracing me, and it, uh, it guides our life to the world of enlightenment every day, every moment. So again, when you, you, if you have a time to think about ocean, we can remember I might be in the ocean with a life of worries, concerns, but at the same time, I do have Buddha's vow ship in my life. As a conclusion, let me share the words again. The ocean birth and death of painful existence has no bound. Only by the ship of Amida's universal vow can we 
who have long been drowning, unfailingly be brought across it. No more me dots. No more me dots. No more me dots. So now we'd have a gatha singing. Uh, today is uh, becoming free. So let me play the music. Would you like to lie to your test as you journey down Black's Road? The Serenity will be yours. Yes, let go, let go your ego break and become your true self. Yes, let go your ego break, the freedom will be yours. Would you like to listen the Lord as you meet each bright new day? Then let go, let go, deeds are so blind, and true gratitude will be yours. Yes, let go, let go, your ego great. And become your true self. Yes, let go your ego, break the freedom will be yours. Would you like to be more free as you live? Fleeting day, then reflect, reflect in perfect self, and true gratitude will be yours. Yes, let go, let go your ego break and become your true self. Yes, let go your ego break, the freedom will be yours. Now we do have a reading of homages. Today, uh, please join me reading our uh, old section, everything. Hard it is to be born into human life. Now we are living in it. Difficult it is to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear them. If we do not gain emancipation in this present life, we may not be free from the ill feeling in the ocean birth and death for Kalpas. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures. We go to the Buddha for guidance. May we always walk in the way that leads to enlightenment. We go to the Dharma for guidance. May we be submerged in the depth of the teachings and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. We go to the Sangha for guidance. May we all with one accord live the life of harmony in the spirit of oneness, free from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriads of kalpas, hard it is to hear such excellent and profound teachings now we are able to hear and receive them. Let us try to understand the Tathagata teachings. No more Amidavts, no more Amidavts, no more Amidavts. Now we do have a Nembutsu chanting. No
So again today, thank you so much for taking your time to attend our online Wednesday service. So this coming Sunday, also we'll have a recorded message will be shared. Uh, this Sunday speaker is Reverend Joshin Kamuro. Also, uh, past Monday, I also began, began to share message for children. Yeah, Monday 7 p.m. about the uh, 10 minutes message. So next Monday, 7 p.m. o'clock, uh, please join also watch the message for children. This is all for children message. So again, thank you so much for your time today. Have a happy, nice day. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Bye-bye.